If you have ever tried doing computer vision projects in Python, it ends up looking like this. Here I'm using the Simpsons data set. I've got a load of variables that I've set here. And I've got lots of code here. You can see that I'm creating a convnet. I've got a method for running a forward pass and various code here to train and analyze the model. So when we run this, it's gonna load up all the data sets and it's gonna start running the epochs to be able to test this. And you can see in Perfmon, I'm running on an RTX 3090 and you can see that I'm running about 83% on the CUDA and about 24 gig on dedicated GPU memory usage. And that's probably due to my bad coding rather than any inefficiencies we've got within PyTorch. So there are alternatives to the terror and pain of training your own model. We can simply use somebody else's model, which is exposed as an API. So I'm in my Azure portal now and I've got a resource group called Cognitive Services Webcasts. And I'm gonna create an instance of the computer vision service. So here I just search for the computers. You can see we do have the option for quantum computers. That might be worth looking at later on. But here I'm just gonna select computer vision. And we'll create one of these. For the location, I'm gonna choose West Europe. And that's the closest Azure region to me in terms of latency. And I'll name the service Allen Computer Vision. For the pricing tier, I've got an option. I can choose the free tier and I can run up to 20 calls a minute or 5,000 calls a month. Or I can choose a standard tier. I will be paying for this, but then I can run up to 10 calls a second. I think for the demo, I'm not going to exceed those quotas, so I can go with a free option there. I do have to check this checkbox to agree to the terms and conditions, and you can go in and read those in a bit more detail if you'd like to. Okay, so let's create that service. So while that's spinning up, I'm going to snap back to Visual Studio. Let's do File New Project. And I'm going to create a new Python application. So I'm going to call it Computer Vision Python. So in the project, I'm going to create a new Python environment. Call it CVN for Computer Vision Environment. And I'm going to use this to add any uh, of the uh, pip packages that we're going to be using uh, for the Azure Computer Vision service. Okay, to get started, there's some startup documentation. So whichever language we're using, we can select here. I've got Python selected, and it's showing some chunks of code for just basically building a simple starting solution. So I'm just gonna basically copy these and put them into Visual Studio. However, first we just need to install the pip packages for computer vision, and we're gonna be playing around with images as well. So we're gonna install Pillow as well. So I'm gonna copy this. Back to Visual Studio, I should be able to bring up a, a command prompt for this Python environment. And you can see we've got pip installed here, so I can just basically paste in the installer for the cognitive services packages. And there it goes. You can see them appearing in Visual Studio. And if I type pip list, you can see them appearing within the environment. We also need to install Pillow, so I'll do that. Okay, that's gone in fine. And we should be ready to roll. So back in the documentation, I can get started with the coding. So this chunk of code is basically going to import all of the references to all of the different uh, class libraries that we're going to be uh, using. So think of it, if you're a C-sharp programmer, just think of it as using, uh, and that's basically bringing in those various uh, declarations there. So back in Visual Studio, I can just paste in that chunk of code there. There's a, a bunch of stuff that we're not going to be using right now, such as the pillow and sys and time, but I may make, make use of those uh, later on. Next thing we're going to do is to set the subscription key and endpoint for the service I've just created. So I will need to paste in my own subscription key and endpoint there. So let's drop that back in Studio. And back to the docs. We can create the computer vision client. I think I'll just split these windows. This might be a bit easier. Um, so this is going to create the client. And then uh, we're gonna be using a sample image URL, which is online. And we're gonna be getting a description of that image by calling out to the service there. Okay, so before this is run, I need to set the subscription key and the endpoint. I kind of prefer those um, single quotes when I'm working in Python. So what I need to do is to go to the portal and be able to grab those uh, values that I set for the service that I have just created. So if we go to the resource, we should be able to go to the keys and endpoints. And I'm gonna copy the um, endpoint here. 
I'm going to paste this in the endpoint section. I'm going to go back and copy the first key and paste this in here. So there's my subscription key and there's my endpoint. So let's just see if this application is going to do anything. So it's coming back, an ancient city with many ruins with Colosseum in the background. A confidence of 33.8%. So what we can do is just verify this. I'm going to copy the URL for the image here. And let's paste it in a new browser tab. Indeed, it does seem to be the Colosseum uh, with uh, ruins and pillars and so on. So it has done a successful uh, classification of that image or successful description of that image. Now, this is one that Microsoft has su uh, supplied. What I'd like to do is to be able to test it with a few of my own images. So let's see how we can modify the code uh, to be able to work with files. So these are the files I'm going to be working with. I've just got this sample folder on my machine uh, with computer vision demo images. So what I'm going to do is to drop back to Studio. And instead of using an image URL, uh, let's use an image path. So I'm going to need to copy this path. Again, I think splitting the windows is going gonna, is gonna to speed things up here. So let's drop in the file path, and then it's going to be the image itself. Uh, let's take this one, bond3.jpg, and drop this in there. I'm just going to change these backslashes to, uh, to forward slashes there. So now we've got a file path, and what we're going to be doing is calling a different method. I'm just going to remove these comments and this, uh, this print, because that's, uh, that's just getting in the way. So when we call the API, here we're calling describe image, and we're passing a URL. However, IntelliSense tells us that we've got some other options to be able to work with here. So instead of using describe image, I'm going to use describe image in stream. And what we have to specify here is a, a stream. There are some other options, but I just need to specify a file stream. So what I need to do is to basically open the file, get the stream from the file and send that off to the service. So if I type with open and then we pass in the file path. The options are going to be RB, so specify the mode is going to be RB. This is going to be as image stream. So that should give us an image stream there. And then uh, I can just basically indent this code here because that will be go, go in within the width. And what we're going to be passing in is the image stream. So let's just see uh, if this is going to give us a sensible response. So it's saying Daniel Craig standing next to a white sports car. So it does look to be pretty accurate. Now, what I'd like to do really is, is iterate through all of these images and generate a description for each file. So this should be fairly straightforward. What I first need to do is to get a list of all of the files in a particular folder. Uh, I think I can get rid of that um, image URL. We don't need that anymore. Uh, and we do have import OS uh, specified up here. So I should be able to do that. So what I'm gonna do down here is I can actually change this to a uh, folder. And uh, it's just going to be that uh, computer vision demo images folder that I'm using. And then I basically need to enumerate through all of the files in here. So what I can do is files is equal to os.listdir. And then I can pass in folder. Then we can iterate through those. So for file in files. And what we're going to do is to basically construct the file name because file will just be the name of the file. So I need to do um, well, file path is equal to os.path.join. And then I'm going to basically drop in uh, the folder. So what we can do now is uh, just basically indent this code here. So it's going to do it for each image. And we're getting description results. I'll just shift this uh, around here so we can see what we're doing from the image stream. So I don't think that, that really uh, needs to, uh, to change there. So let's just see what this is going to do. Ah, it would help to have the file name there. So hopefully this is going to be more successful. So it's going through and iterating these. What I'm going to do is just stick this thing over here. And I'm going to drop um, the images here. We can just basically make that a bit smaller. So you can see it's got Daniel Craig standing next to a white sports car. And then for Jeremy Clarkson, uh, it's a man standing next to a sports car. We've got a, 
A person standing next to a red car with a crowd of people in the background. A man standing next to a car. A group of people on a racetrack. A red car on a track. So you can see it's providing quite good uh, descriptions of these. So when it gets to this one, it's actually mentioning uh, people uh, within the image. It's got a few of the original uh, team at uh, Microsoft. It's able to recognize Stockholm City Hall. You can see it's picked up that image here. And then when we look at the old Top Gear uh, presenters, you can see it's Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond and James May are posing for a picture. And then the new Top Gear presenters is just a group of men standing next to a car. Um, I don't really like the new series of, of Top Gear. Uh, you may have uh, gathered that by my, my previous uh, webcasts. Okay, so it's able to provide a description on those. Uh, what I'm going to do is to just stick a breakpoint here. And what we can do is look what is in the description results that we're getting back and see if there's anything else to play with. Okay, so if we hit this uh, breakpoint, I can take description results. I can stick that in the watch window. And I can expand that. And you can see that as well as the um, captions, uh, you can see it's come up with, with a, the caption there, Daniel Craig standing next to a white car. It's also giving us some tags. And you can see it's saying sky, outdoor person, suit, road, man, car, standing, dressed, posing, and so on. So we've got 10 tags for that one. Stepping through again, you can see we've got text, outdoor, car, person, man, sign, posing. And that was a man standing next to a car. I think that was uh, Jeremy Clarkson. And there was some text in there. So it's mentioning uh, text in that particular image. That was um, that one uh, there. Okay, so it's looking like, um, you know, being able to, to get a description on the images and be able to get tags on the images is really easy at using this service. However, there's a lot more that we can do with this service. And I'll run through some of the other features. So as well as uh, providing descriptions on images, we can also do object detection. So if I go in here and just type OB, we can see that we've got a couple of options here, uh, detect objects and detect objects in stream. So I'm going to take this one here and um, what we're going to be doing is just sending in uh, the same stream here. Uh, this says description results, so I'll just do this as uh, results just to keep this generic. And uh, we're no longer going to be using uh, this code here, so we can get rid of that. What I just want to do is kind of get uh, an idea of what we are returning. So I'm just going to do print uh, and drop a breakpoint on there and hit F5. And we should be able to see what those results are with passing in uh, the first image. OK, so we've hit the breakpoint. Uh, let's get rid of that in the watch window and drop in at results into the watch window. And you can see here uh, we've got an array of objects. So there's uh, basically uh, five of them uh, that have been detected. And we look at the first one. You can see the first one is a tie. We've got the confidence here and we've also got a rectangle. And what this is giving us uh, is the actual coordinates of where this um, object is appearing within the image. And these coordinates are in, in pixels. Sometimes when you're doing uh, object detection, it will come back with kind of a percentage of, of whereabouts that is in the image. But this has been uh, converted into imager pixels. So the next one is a tire. And then we've got jeans. And then we've got a person. And then we've got a car. And you can see for each of these, we get the actual confidence uh, on these uh, of how confident the model is that it is that, uh, partic that particular object here. It's also listing these, these parent objects because the jeans uh, can also be considered as a pair of trousers. So some of them do have a, a parent mentioned and tire is part of a wheel. And car has a parent of land vehicle and that has a parent of vehicle there. So uh, it's really giving us you know, really detailed information about what these, these classes are. So what would be nice to do just to evaluate uh, the accuracy of this is to cycle through all of those images and then use these rectangles to be able to draw bounding boxes on these images. So we've got a uh, pillow installed, uh, so it should be fairly easy uh, to be able to use some of the pillow functionality to draw bounding boxes and, and label uh, these images. So what we also need to do is to actually load the image and we can do this with pillow. So if I do image equals image dot open, and then we pass in um, the file path. And that will give us a, a pillow image that we can manipulate. So let's iterate through the objects that are returned here. So if I do for object in results dot objects, And 
I'm just going to shift in that print and what I want to do is to just basically debug this and get out um, the details of the rectangle uh, that we are going to explore. Um, I'm working Visual Studio so when I don't get IntelliSense uh, I'm completely lost and I'm just going to use the immediate window to pick up uh, the actual uh, vari variables I'm going to be using here. Okay, so if we hit the break point, we should be able to drop object into the watch window and be able to see uh, that we've got the details here uh, with the various uh, information like this. I often prefer to work in the immediate window. So what I can do here is just drop in object and we can see that we've got things like the object property. So I can just copy paste this in here. So that's gonna give me a tie. So this is gonna be important here. So let's drop that in here. And we're going to also need uh, the information on the rectangle. So if I take object dot uh, rectangle, that's giving us the actual details at height, width, x and y. So I can drop that in there. And just uh, specify here that we've got h, w, x and y. And then uh, we also wanted the confidence, uh, which is uh, present. I think that will be object.confidence uh, here, which you should be able to see. And I can copy paste that. Yeah, so that's coming out with that value there. And that's going to be important as well. And this is just going to help me code up um, the code for being able to draw that uh, rectangle bounding box. So I should be able to stop here. Can remove that breakpoint. And what I'm going to do is to basically um, define whereabouts we're going to draw the bounding box. So first I'm going to extract um, the various coordinates. So left is equal to, it's going to be object dot rectangle dot x. And then I can copy paste this four times. And let's have right and width and height. And I'm going to be using these uh, quite, quite a few times. So right is going to be Y. And I'm using these quite a few times. So this will just basically save me uh, having to, you know, use the long winded uh, access uh, for those. And then we've got the uh, width and now we've got the height. So we've got those items uh, present there. And what we need to do is to be able to draw a rectangle onto the actual uh, pill image uh, using those uh, those actual coordinates. So what I can do is just basically define a shape for those. Um, shape is gonna be equal to, it's gonna be an array. And uh, we're gonna drop in some uh, tuples here for the coordinates. So let's have left comma top. And the other tuple is gonna be left plus width and then we've got top plus height so that should give us uh, the shape of the rectangle uh, that we're going to draw in pixel coordinates and then uh, we should be able to do image draw and specify that we're drawing a rectangle and then we've got the shape and then the um, outline so let's draw it in red and uh, specify width equals five. Okay, also uh, when I'm importing image from pill, I also want to import image draw. And also I'm gonna be writing some text on there, so I may as well bring in image font there as well. So I've got all, I've got all of those imports. It'd also be nice to, to label this and give a confidence. So the text that we're going to be writing out there is going to be equal to, and I'm going to use this uh, format option in Python. And what we're going to have is the, um, the name of the object that it's detected. And this was the object dot object property, which I can paste in there. And then we kind of want to give uh, an uh, idea of the actual percentage. Uh, so if I drop in uh, these brackets, and then say so it's gonna be such and such a percent. And then within here, I can drop in the uh, curly brackets that we're using. I can actually drop the percentage in, the, in there. And then within here, we're gonna calculate the percentage. So if I take uh, the object.confidence and multiply that by 100, that will give us uh, the percentage score. And then we can uh, write the text uh, to the image. So if I do image uh, draw, 
and we're going to draw out the text. Um, what I'm going to do is to place this somewhere close uh, within the actual uh, box uh, coordinates here. So I've tested this before and I was using uh, left plus five and then uh, top plus height minus 30. And then uh, we can, so, that, so that's going to be the position uh, where it draws the text. And then we specify the uh, text uh, that we're going to be uh, writing out, which is going to be the string that I've had defined previously. And then uh, the color. So I'll do this as uh, 25500. I think that's, uh, that's red as well. And then uh, specify the font. And I think I'll define a variable uh, for the font so we can, we can modify this. Uh, so I can drop it up here. Font is equal to uh, so we can have the Arial uh, True Type font, and I'll drop the size as being uh, sixteen. I think before we actually uh, start writing to the image, I need to generate an image draw object. So this will be image draw is equal to image draw dot draw, and then we pass in the image uh, that we've uh, we've loaded up. So hopefully uh, that will uh, that will work. So we're writing our text, and then I can just specify font is uh, equal to font and that will create it. Now I've experimented with this, this is going to write it in red. Um, however, what I'd like to do is to have it uh, highlight a bit more. So what I'm going to do is just uh, paste this line twice, if I can do that. And uh, then we're going to write out the text first in black uh, and then we're going to overwrite it in red. So it will kind of have a little, uh, little drop shadow on here. So if I just drop on a uh, plus one here and then a plus one here. That should give me uh, kind of a drop shadow uh, effect there. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick test uh, to see if this works. And I think if I do uh, image.show, once we've drawn the objects on here, um, don't need that anymore. It should uh, display the image, so let's just see what this does. Oh, image font was not defined, yep. Python is case sensitive, let's fix that. Top is not defined, left, right, width, height. Oh, I should have been left, top, sorry. Let's see. Okay, so it's cracked out in the image in paint. We can see that we've got tie here, we've got person, we've got jeans, we've got the tire, and we've got the car. And it does seem to be uh, drawing those uh, bounding, bounding boxes in the appropriate places. If I close this, we get the next one, it's detected a car and a person. And rather than just going through all of these uh, and opening them in paint, uh, let's save them down to an output directory uh, so we can run through it. So I can close this. Here I've got the actual input images and I've generated another folder uh, called computer vision out. So let's just uh, specify that as an actual variable here. So I can copy the folder here and we'll have an outbound folder here. And what I'll do is just drop over, just replace this with with the name of this folder here, which is going to be computer vision out. So let's paste that in there. And instead of showing the image, uh, let's get rid of that and save the image. And what we need is uh, os.path.join. And the paths are going to be uh, the actual outbound folder, which is going to be out folder. Then we've got the file name, uh, so let's go up and uh, just drag, drag this. Hopefully uh, that's going to save our images uh, for us here. I'm just going to do a print of the actual uh, image as we uh, run through those. Uh, so if I just do, uh, just print out the file so we see that something is happening in the window. So you can see it's rattling through those images there fairly quickly, even though I'm on the free tier, uh, I'm not exceeding that at that quota that we've got. And if you go into the outbound folder, uh, let's view extra large icons, and you can see that all of these have been tagged. So this is now opening in uh, in photos instead of paint, so I should be able to just flip through these. Uh, we've seen those two already, but here it's detected a person, it's detected a car. Same thing there, person car. It's also detected this person here. It's looking like there was a person. It's a bit obscured by the, the box, though. 
Hasn't detected any objects on this. That's surprising. I thought it would have picked up some vans or something. Uh, maybe they're, they're too small in there. Hasn't detected anything there. But here it has detected a car. This one's quite high resolution, uh, but it has detected it as a race car there. And the Lego car has been detected as a car. Nothing here on this particular building there, but here they've detected lots and lots of people in these various images. It's detected some glasses as well on these two people. Oh, sorry, three people, it's four people it's detected glasses on, but, but not these glasses. Uh, maybe there's a, there's a confidence threshold that you can specify, because it's looking like all of these are above 50%, uh, so I'm guessing you can actually specify a lower uh, threshold if you want for the confidence there. Ah, oh, lighthouse. It thinks Sockham City Hall is a lighthouse. Um, and then we've got uh, the people and the car detected there, and the people and the car detected there. So I think this is, this is a really nice way of being able to do uh, object detection. Um, the advantage here is, you know, I'm using it on the free tier, and I can get, you know, a bit of a um, reasonable performance just for small uh, hobby projects. If you're using it commercially, you can go onto the standard tier, uh, and then you can run quite a, quite a substantial throughput uh, through this if you want to classify uh, lots and lots of image. However, there are disadvantages in that um, the model is trained by Microsoft with specific objects and although it's been very well trained and does give us very very specific objects uh, it's not possible to detect what type of car it is and sometimes there can be inaccuracies it's uh, classifying this Aston Martin DB9 as a station wagon. Uh, there are other options. You can use things like the uh, custom vision service in Azor uh, to be able to uh, build a simple model that you train yourself using your own images. And it will be able to classify uh, the type of car that we're using. And I've got some examples of that using, I think, using the Simpsons data set for like, character, character classification and then uh, fast car classification uh, using data sets I've dragged down from Google. So it could actually classify this as an Aston uh, Martin. Another thing that's very easy to use uh, with this uh, computer vision service is for domain specific models. Now currently uh, there's only two supported. We've got celebrities and we've got landmarks. So looking at my data set, if I go back to the, um, the demo images, I think I've only got one landmark, unless you count this as a landmark, but there are quite a few celebrities uh, present in here. So what I'm gonna do is to modify the code uh, to do celebrity detection instead of object detection. So the majority of this code is written, it shouldn't be too difficult uh, to be able to uh, modify this uh, because I've already got the code to draw the bounding boxes. So what I'm going to do here is analyze images by domain in stream. And here we have to specify a couple of parameters. Uh, what I'm going to specify is the actual domain uh, that we're going to be using the model. So I'm going to specify its celebrities. And then uh, we just pass in the image stream uh, as we did uh, with the, uh, the previous one. Now, before we start drawing bounding boxes, um, you know, it's not going to be object.rectangle, it's going to be something else. So let's just stick a breakpoint there and uh, run this. And this will help us to analyze uh, what we're getting back in the results. So um, this time results. So this time results, you can see we've got this result uh, section here, and then we've got a celebrities uh, collection here. So uh, I think if I go in. Uh, the immediate window. Let's just clear out all of that old stuff. And um, we can go results.result. .result. And you can see we've got celebrities there. Uh, so let's have a look what we've got here. Oh, it's not that, it seems to be a dictionary. So what I'll do here is just um, see if we can access it that way. And we'll take celebrities in here. This is why I really like using this uh, immediate window, uh, just for looking at you know how we can retrieve variables and then how we can uh, we can display them. So it's telling us uh, that we do have uh, celebrities here. It has got uh, some of those. So let's just see if this is an array. And um, we can go into zero. And you can see here we've got the information uh, that is uh, is coming back here. So what we've got is the name uh, being Daniel Craig and the confidence being uh, very high on that, 99.9%. .9%. And then we've got this face rectangle uh, that I'm going to use for my bounding box. So if I drop in here name, again it's a dictionary, uh, so this is going to be name. And this is how we get back uh, that information there. So what I'm going to do is just copy this um, inf information here. And again, uh, I'm just going to uh, drop in uh, some comments here so I can just copy paste those values in and get the information. So we want to get out the name, we want to get out the uh, confidence uh, which is going to be this here I think. Yep, so let's drop that in the comments. 
And then uh, we're interested in the uh, face rectangle. So I can just take this thing here. So there we've got uh, the face rectangle, and we've got height, left, top, and width. Um, so what I can do is, uh, and those do look to be dictionaries as well. So, uh, and then uh, let's just see if we can retrieve one of those. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to drop that in there. So I think I can remember uh, that it's going to be uh, left, top, width, and height here. Uh, I could actually just copy these and um, yeah, let's just do that actually. Uh, and then this, my memory's not where it used to be. Um, so that will help us uh, to get a clue as to where that, to drop that particular box. So I think I'm done here. Now what we're going to be doing is uh, is iterating through the uh, these celebrities here. So for celeb in, uh, and then we can take result uh, celebrities like that. Access that dictionary there. And hopefully uh, that's going to give us what we want. And then um, it's going to be for each celebrity. It's going to be um, this left is going to be uh, celeb. And then uh, we're going to be here. So we take face rectangle dot left. And then I can just copy these and uh, just replace these three lines. So this is going to be. Yeah, we've got the uh, top, the width, and the height. Now, this um, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm using these these values a lot down here, and it just basically saves uh, having to copy paste uh, you know these big references here uh, just to set these as as variables here. So um, I'm going to need to change the text as well. So it's not going to be object confidence. It's going to be a celeb uh, confidence. So let's just drop that in there. And it's going to be this thing here. Uh, OK, so yeah, um, I'm using single quotes here. So I can use double quotes for accessing uh, there. That will work fine. And then uh, instead of the object.property, it's going to be the uh, celeb name. So let's do the same thing here, celeb, and um, we can take name. Okay, so this might actually work. Uh, let's just see if it's going to fire off first time or if I've got to fix something. It's thinking about it. Um, oh, maybe my output, oh yeah. List has now attribute objects for celeb in results. Oh yeah, it's not going to be that just going to be a results celebrity so let's try again yep so it seems to be fairly happy uh, rattling through those images there and what I need to do is go back to the uh, outbound folder oh it's printing out name here um, so it wasn't giving the actual name of the celebrity I'm guessing it's going to be the same for all of these so yeah uh, so I just need to change that so it's actually giving out the celebrity name let's see if we can fix that what did I get wrong Oh yeah, I forgot the um, curlies uh, in here. Oh yeah, that should have been curlies and then it should have been uh, celeb name, I think. I think that should be correct. Let's try again. Okay, we've got an exception thrown. Yeah, so what's happening here is uh, I'm exceeding my uh, limit on the free pricing tier. So what I was doing is, uh, is I ran it, uh, fixed it and ran it again. I'm kind of exceeding this, is it 20, uh, 20 a minute or, or something, uh, something like that. So uh, I'll just pause the recording, uh, wait a minute or so and, and try this again. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Yep, seems to have got through everything. Uh, so let's get, go back to the outbound folder and just see who it's picked up. So it has picked up Daniel Craig here. Didn't pick up Jeremy Clarkson or Elon Musk in any of these images there. But it has picked up uh, Bill Gates here and a few of the other uh, people starting at, uh, with the original Microsoft team. Oh, here it has got, uh, I need to zoom in on this a bit. It's got Richard Hammer, Jeremy Clarkson, and, and James May. And it does seem to be. It's a bit strange that this is 100% confidence on Jeremy Clarkson, but the other image um, uh, didn't seem to detect him. So uh, it's interesting that it is able to detect 
some celebrities here. So Matt LeBlanc is the only celebrity in the new uh, Top Gear team. And that's it for those uh, those images there. Okay, so um, takeaways from there. Um, I guess if you're uh, a C Sharp developer, uh, you don't like the fact that I'm working in Python. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I will be doing a, another uh, webcast. I'm pretty much doing exactly the same thing, but using C Sharp. So if you like the Python ones, then like the Python videos. If you like C Sharp, then like uh, the C Sharp. And based on the number of likes, I'll, I'll kind of maybe focus on doing uh, more webcasts in that specific language. I think I've managed to annoy everybody because if you're a Python developer, you probably don't like me at working in, in Visual Studio. I read a book years and years ago called The Pragmatic Programmer uh, that told you to w learn one environment and learn it well. So I think for about 15 years, I've been working uh, in, in Visual Studio. And I know how to use it. I know how to use things like the uh, immediate window. And um, I kind of like Visual Studio for Python. I know there's probably uh, better tools out there and you may be screaming in the comments to use this, uh, this or use that. I'm happy with it. There are a few, um, you know, limitations that I've found. IntelliSense isn't as uh, nice as it uh, should be uh, for many, uh, for m in uh, in many uh, scenarios. But generally, it seems to be a good, uh, a good sort of fairly solid environment to to work with. I especially uh, recommend using uh, the immediate window as I showed, with just you know identifying what these objects are, typing stuff in, and then copy pasting them in here. So I've got easy access to them in, in code. That saves me a lot of time with uh, learning and navigating my uh, way sort of around these uh, these uh, results sets and so on. There's a ton more stuff uh, that you can do with this computer vision service. So, um, you know, dig through the documentation, uh, have a look at the, the other options. You can do landmark detection, you can do logo uh, detection. You can also do uh, better things with analyzing images. You can, uh, you know, check for explicit content. So if you've got a website where people are uploading images, uh, you can basically uh, put a probability that this uh, image may uh, contain explicit content and maybe hide those images or flag those uh, for some type of a moderator approval. It's very easy to use, uh, you know, whatever language uh, you're using it from. And it's not too expensive, even if you you're paying uh, to use this service. And if you're a hobby developer, you know the free tier is there and it's basically free if you have an Azure subscription. So you can go in uh, and start experimenting with that uh, straight away.